بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household May Allah bless all of them without exception All his companions May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them without exception And may Allah bless all those who followed all those who are following and all those who will follow. May Allah make us from among them and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for our offspring as well to be steadfast on the path up to the end. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take care of them even after we have left. Amin. My beloved brothers and sisters, every Wednesday we gather to learn aspects of the lives of the illustrious, those who have passed on before we have covered the lives of so many of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we have covered the aspects of the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This evening I've chosen to speak on some of the aspects that sometimes we take for granted. The reason I've chosen this is because a lot of us would know details about the birth and perhaps the hijrah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the names of his family members and so on. We've been hearing that a lot. And yes, it's very important for us to know this, but what he says is of greater importance is for you to be able to walk on the path that he walked upon. That is the most important. If there is a solid line and the leader is walking on the line and he looks back and tells us, if you would like to where, if you would like to get to where I have got to, all you need to do is walk on the same line. And so what happens is we become oblivious of the fact that the most important thing is to look at that line, to look for the line, to make sure it is the line, and then to walk on it. And this is something that makes you and I, who we are, Muslimin, and very honored to be from the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ask yourselves, and the question is for myself as well, what is the honor that Allah has given you? What is it? Do you think it's in your wealth? Do you think it's in your looks? Do you think it's in your eloquence? Do you think perhaps it is in your family? What is it that Allah has blessed you with that you would consider the ultimate honor? Have you thought of that? In all honesty, it is one thing. The fact that Allah has chosen you and I to be from among what is known as the Ummah, the nation, the Ummah, the followers of the one whom he created as the best of creation. If one were to ask, why did Allah make one being and say he is the best? What is the answer? The answer is, that's up to Allah. Allah did it and He told it to us. The best of creation is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't become jealous of the status Allah has bestowed upon him. Just like it is wrong to become jealous for what Allah has bestowed others. What you have, Allah chose for you. What I have, Allah chose for me. What the next person has, Allah chose for them. We cannot become jealous of one another. We cannot hate one another based on the virtue that Allah has bestowed upon them. Allah is asking a question. Do you become jealous regarding the favor that Allah has bestowed upon the people? Then Allah says, do you want to know the biggest favor we bestowed? فَقَدْ آتَيْنَا آلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ مُلْكًا عَظِيمًا We have bestowed Abraham and his family with something that is vast. The revelation, al-kitab. Which means revelation, if you have it, 
Allah has favored you. It was given to the prophets. The most noble of all the prophets, Allah chose to be Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's who he is. Not only is he the best of creation, but above that, the others who were also considered top in creation, who were messengers of Allah, Allah says, you, we raised you above all of them. Subhanallah. You cannot ask why. Whatever you know, you know. What you don't know, you don't know. You surrender to it to say, the maker told me so. And I believe so. Don't we acknowledge that amongst us, there are some who are wealthier than others. Who gave them that wealth? Allah. There are some who are more knowledgeable than others. Who gave them that? Allah. There are some who have been favored by Allah in various matters. Some people's lives very successful. They seem extremely happy and others seem quite sad. What happened? It's Allah. It's part of Allah's plan. I cannot say why did Allah give him and not give me. I have to say, oh Allah, I thank you for what you have given me. And I am honored to be linked to the one whom you've given the most to. That's an honor. Imagine the wealthiest from amongst us here, you are his best friend. Would you ever see a bad day? The truth is, you wouldn't because if he was really your friend and he was as wealthy as everybody said he was, the day you had a bad moment, for example, he would rush and tell you, listen, anything, just let me know. Well, some of us, mind you, we might be saying to one another, let me know. And the day we let them know, we find they don't even want to answer the phone. But it doesn't happen with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the honor that is ours that Allah says, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been favored. And your favor is the link with him. That's what it is. Because when we favored Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we gave him the guidance, we gave him the book, we gave him the revelation, we told him to give it to others. Because we wanted others to get that guidance. And when they got it through him, it was an honor that they recognized the messenger. Subhanallah. You recognize a messenger. Imagine if a president sends to you someone to give you a message. And you just think this is a man walking on the street. You don't even allow him into your premises. What would happen? You were foolish not to recognize that, you know what? There is a police escort maybe. Perhaps there is a vehicle that is marked. Perhaps there is another sign. You need to be alert enough to be able to recognize that, yes, this message is coming from the president. This man, let me honor him. He will walk into your home. You will tell him welcome. You will listen to what he has to say. You will smile. And today is... You know, we are living in an age where everyone is so proud, they might even want to post on the internet what exactly has happened. I met someone big. Just as well you recognize them. So the point I'm raising is to recognize Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the honor. That's from Allah. We have recognized him. Don't we say, La ilaha illallah. What comes after that? It's not complete. Muhammadur Rasulullah. Amazing, amazing. Allah says, you want to declare that I am one? You need to declare something else because that is the honor. How did you find out about Allah? It was through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Why Allah chose him? There you are, the honor. So I've spent moments explaining and reminding myself and yourselves that the honor is actually the fact that we are given a gift of Allah. That we are part of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu The Iman that we have, it comes through that. I have belief. You know, people say the biggest gift is Iman. It's correct. Because Iman came to you through the same thing. Subhanallah. People say the biggest gift is the fact that you are following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Indeed, the biggest gift is you are worshipping Allah alone. Indeed, because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught you what to do. I'm reading the Quran, the word of Allah. How did it come to me? Through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why it is considered an insult to hear the name of the best of creation and refuse to say, may peace be upon him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't be shy to utter it aloud. I always find myself in tears when I visit the rural areas of my own country and I listen to people whom you may not even have considered extremely knowledgeable when the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is uttered. Wallahi, they are not shy to utter sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aloud all at once. And the, the more you go into the urban areas, the more shy the people become of saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is a fact. 
change that. My brothers and sisters, you want honor. Your honor comes by honoring the messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't be shy to repeat it a hundred times. Whenever you hear his name, say it. It's the honor. Do you know what Allah says? We heard the verses in Salatul Isha. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allah and the angels send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O oh, you who believe, do the same, send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The instruction is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I can tell you something else. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whenever anyone from amongst you sends blessings and salutations upon me, Allah sends blessings upon them tenfold. So the honor is still ours. مَنْ صَلَّى عَلَيَّ وَاحِدَةً صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ بِهَا عَشْرًا Whoever sends blessings or salutations upon me once, Allah multiplies it ten times and sends it back to the same person. So when I say صلى الله عليه وسلم aloud, that might be my ticket to heaven. Do you know that? It's my ticket to Jannah perhaps. Because I love the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم enough to be able to say صلى الله عليه وسلم a million times if it is said if his name is said and even if his name is not said guess what it is an act of worship just to declare that to send blessings and salutations upon muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam do you know what he says he says muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says those from amongst you who are the most deserving of the intercession on the day of judgment that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been honored with are those who send the most blessings and salutations upon him. And this is why there are competitions. Competitions meaning like on a Friday, for example. Who is the one who will send the most blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So the name is recorded. This person 200,000 times. Wow, subhanallah, through the day. What was it? A Friday. You and me, not even twice. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us. What's the competition? You haven't even said hello. Astaghfirullah. You haven't even started. Let's let that never happen. We enter the fold of Islam by a declaration. It is the declaration of faith. I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad, may peace be upon him, is the final messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when Allah says that I too bless and salute or send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who am I to become arrogant to say, you know what? I'll see, I'll think about it. Like I said, don't be shy to say it aloud, even while I'm talking today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all tenfold and more. Now let's go to see what is, it, am I, what is it I am supposed to be doing when it comes to this great messenger? There's only one word. One word, not more than one word. Follow. That's it. Follow. Follow the leader. Whatever he does, you do. Whatever he said, you follow. Whatever he said, don't do, you don't do. Whatever you're doubting, throw it out. Especially in terms of that which you would consume. The, he has made it clear and he says al halal bayyin wal haram bayyin halal is clear haram is clear in the middle there are things that are not so clear people are debating leave it out that is the messenger's path so whatever he says allah says in the quran wa ma ataakum ar rasul fa khudhuhu wa ma nahaakum anhu fa antahu wattaqullah Whatever the messenger has instructed you, consider it an instruction. Whatever the messenger has prohibited, consider it a prohibition. And fear Allah. Be conscious of Allah. When he says, don't do this, you won't be there. When he said, do this, you will be there. That is success. So, there is something beyond that. Sometimes you find Muhammad wasallam didn't say something. Nor did he negate, nor did he prohibit. But 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that if you would like ultimate success, follow him, whatever he did in his life, even without talking. He might not have told you that this is how you should treat your wives. He has spoken about the treatment of wives, but the details of what to be done. Regarding treatment of wives, he says, خيركم, خيركم wa The best from amongst you is he who is best to his wives. And the term ahl goes beyond just a wife. It refers to the family. Al-ahl, ahli, for example. My family. So he who is best to his family members is the best from amongst us here. When your family can stand up and say you are a lovely person, you are indeed a lovely person. Do you know why? They live with you 24-7. They know you. What's the point of the whole world who only sees you for a few hours sometimes saying you're a wonderful man and your wife is struggling, crying. And she's making dua to Allah that you die because she doesn't want you there anymore. What's the point? And you're such a, you know, you consider yourself a big man because the world thinks you're a top shot. Why? The Prophet says the honor is when those who know you inside out can bear witness that you are a top person. Then that is the honor. Subhanallah. So this is something amazing. He spoke about it. And you know what he said at the end? After saying the best from amongst you, he who is best to his family members and I am the best to my family from, from amongst all of you. Which means if you want to know how to deal with your family members, just come and look at how I deal with my family. That's what he told us. So you take a look at how he spoke. He never ever swore, not once. So if you swear there is something wrong with your sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you swear, if you have vulgar words come out of your mouth, you are not towing the line. You are not following that solid line I was talking about. Because you are saying, I love, I love, but you actually don't. It's just lip service. Stop swearing. Every one of us can take something from that. It doesn't have to be a vulgar word, but a hurtful word. He never ever said a hurtful word to any of his family members. Let's be honest, myself included. Aren't we guilty of saying words that make some of our family members weep at times? Change that. If you really want the honor to be yours in the greatest way, follow. Here is the path. We are telling you there are things we take for granted. Number one, the tongue. With whom? With those who are the most vulnerable. These are my children. They will break. They will scratch. They will damage. They will get hurt. They will get sick. How do I react? All of that is just a test to, for you to prove that you're following a certain path. You're not just doing what comes to your head. Human nature will make you want to become a little bit upset and angry. Your Iman and your gift, which is the biggest one of being an Ummati of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will make you realize that, you know what? I shouldn't be reacting in a typical way that we are taught perhaps on the screens and on the net and in the movies and everywhere else. I must react in a way that I believe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have reacted. A few days ago, someone asked me a question that, you know, I would like to go to a certain place. And that was a very bad place where evil things were happening. And this person told me, is it okay or not? And I wanted to answer them in a way that they understood where I was coming from. I said, look, ask yourself, would Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever go there? He said, obviously not. He's a Nabi. Look at the answer. So I said, would any of the companions go there? He said, obviously not. They were Sahaba. I said, would any of the Muslimin of the first few generations go there? He says, no, because they were top. I said, wouldn't you like to be top? Come on. Wouldn't you like to be top? He says, okay, okay, I get your point. I get your point. But it shouldn't have gone all the way there. If Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you wouldn't imagine that he's there or he would be there or the Sahaba would be there. It's enough for you to say, I'm not going there. It's over. It's enough. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant ease for us. Yes, we are living in different times, but within the limits of what is permissible, we should be living. That's what it is. So your family, there is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There were so many other things he didn't speak about, but he did with his family members that were not only the best, 
but they become an act of worship by you adopting them. I give you an example. He helped his wives, he helped his family members get on to the conveyance. At that time, the camel. How many of us would be bothered to open the door for a family member unless the car is brand new? And consider it a sunnah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why we said you want your life to be perfect. The more you follow on the path, the more perfect it becomes. It will never reach perfection, but you aim there and you're going to get somewhere. You become a happy person. He never ever had trust issues, nor did his wives. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them all. Never had trust issues. Why? He was upright. Today, half of our life is a secret. You have a code on your phone and you have not a thumbprint, but you're so worried that in your sleep, your wife might actually put your thumb onto your phone. So guess what? You have a toe print. May Allah forgive us. It's foolish. We are so secretive because we have something to hide. Let's be honest. What do you have to hide? What is it? Then if trust issues are not going to come up, what do you expect to come up? Where is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And where are you and I? We can change that, can't we? It has to start now. Become straight where your relationships are manifest. People trust you. They know you. Your family trusts you. How do you expect the people in the community to trust? How do we expect them to trust us when our own family members don't trust us? May Allah forgive us, really. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what a path. Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Indeed, in the life, in the entire life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a beautiful example to emulate and to follow. But for who? For those who are looking forward to something. To what? Those who are looking forward to Allah. Those who want Allah. You want a link with Allah. Allah sent you a messenger and he said, not only is the revelation that I have sent the Quran alone, but anything that was done by this man was actually from me. Subhanallah. So you follow it, you follow it, and you get goodness, not only in this world, but even in the hereafter. Allah says, the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will only be taken seriously by those who want to meet with Allah, those who want to have a link with Allah, those who are looking forward to getting to Allah, and those who are bothered about the last day. I'm bothered about the last day. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he used to drink with his wives, and this is a narration that is recorded. He, with Aisha radiallahu anha, he would wait for her to sip and he would sip from the utensil at the exact spot that she sipped from in order to make her blush. And then he had a name for her because she used to blush a lot. He used to call her Rosie, for example. In the Arabic language, Humayra, one who becomes red, one who blushes because she used to blush a lot. But he used to make her blush. How many of us have made our own wives blush? It's a sunnah. Don't be embarrassed. And you must be sitting here thinking, how? I'm married for 30 years. <laughs> well, go and think about it. You can still make her blush. Subhanallah. Sunnah. Talk about the sunnah. Why don't we activate something of this nature? Your life will become so fruitful. You will, it will be worth it. Subhanallah. It's worth it. When she used to eat, radiyallahu anha, he, you know the bone that she would eat from? He would take that bone and he would, he would make sure she's looking at him and he would turn the bone around until he got to the spot where she was eating from and then he bit it from there and she blushed again. Subhanallah. With us, hey, mouth bar, that's what they call it. Isn't it? I can't drink from here. I'm going to get bacteria. That's what it is. That's your spouse. May Allah forgive us. It's a reality. I'm talking fact. We talk of sunnah. People think, you know what? This man is a good Muslim. My brother, Islam is not determined by only that which is outward. That which is outward is extremely important. But at times, if the inside is hollow, trust me, we lose out in a big way. 
develop the outside and the inside as best as you can. We've been warned about pretending to be pious when in the hidden life that you have, you have something going that is far from Allah and very close to shaitan. Let that not happen. So take a look at this. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he spoke to his wives, he used the best and the sweetest words. Ask yourself, when you are talking to your spouse, do you use the best and the sweetest words? The sweetest words. They would love to hear him speak with us. They would love that we shut up. Astaghfirullah. Because you don't have anything good to say. My brothers and sisters, this doesn't only apply to the men. Sunnah. It would apply to the females as well. Use the best, the most loving, the sweetest words to speak to your husbands. Subhanallah. Utter these words. And you know what? Not only will it improve your relationship, but it's a sunnah. You will get a reward for it. It could just be your ticket to Jannah. You know, I always read that there will be a scale on the day of judgment. Allah says, the scales of justice shall be laid on the day of judgment. Nobody will be oppressed at all. So they weigh the good deeds and the bad deeds. Say, for example, picture it for a moment. Your good deeds are there, your bad deeds are there. And you know what? It's now you're just worried looking at it and you're thinking to yourself, I wonder what's going to happen. And suddenly the sweet words that you uttered to your husband, mashallah, they come there, they on the scale and suddenly it tips, it starts tipping. What saved you? What was your ticket to Jannah? Tell me. What was your ticket to Jannah? It was something minor in the eyes of other human beings, major in the eyes of Allah. It got you to Jannah. It tipped the scale. The beauty is Allah says, if your good deeds are more than your bad deeds, we are not worried about what bad you've done, you will go to Jannah. Subhanallah. The problem is we don't know the weight of the deeds. We don't know. So something we consider a minor sin might be heavy in the eyes of Allah. So when it gets to the scale, we won't, we won't believe that we see. We thought it was such a small thing. For example, to accuse someone of having an affair. Allah says, تَحْسَبُونَهُ هَيِّنًا وَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ You think it is a small statement, but in the eyes of Allah, it is massive. It caused sleepless nights for innocent people. You entered into the life of someone you had nothing to do with. Their sin was between them and Allah. Why did you accuse them of having an affair? Why did you even go into their lives? Allah says that is a heavy, heavy, heavy sin. This is why we say, keep on doing good deeds. You never know which good deed is going to be your ticket. So the sweet words we're talking about. Being kind and good to your family members, reaching out to them, being there when they need you, being bothered about their health. The Prophet ﷺ used to be so concerned about the health of his family members, not only his family, because he was the messenger ﷺ, he was bothered about the entire ummah. With us, the child is sick. A week has passed. You haven't even bothered to even ask what's going on. The doctor lives right next door. You haven't even bothered to go and see the doctor. And you're saying, don't worry, make dua. Suddenly you've become pious. Mashallah, make dua. Well, when you have a big disaster, we are all going to sit and say, make dua. Then what's going to happen? You will get irritated because dua is important. But together with it, Allah has blessed you with a capacity. You need to make sure you use the energies bestowed upon you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do something about the situation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. We take it for granted. Let's take a look at some other aspects of the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. One thing I love is the story of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. Do you know who he was? He was a little boy. At the time when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made the hijrah and came from Mecca to Medina. Do you know what happened? People were coming with gifts. Do you know he was... Someone who came in knew the companions had come in, they were new. So those who were living in Medina were known as Ansar. Ansar meaning the helpers. They helped those who came in. You know, today when you have expatriates coming into the country, people say, ha, look at these expats. Hey, there's too many of them now. And you find statements being uttered of hurt 
Wallahi, if you want to learn something from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, you will welcome your brothers and sisters and you will make them feel at home. You will reach out to them and ask them if they need any help. Subhanallah. That's the feeling of a mu'min. I'm saying this intentionally for us to revisit the way we look at things. So what happened to the Ansar? Let me explain quickly. They were coming with gifts to the various Muhajireen. And obviously the best of the gifts were coming towards Muhammad sallallahu And he did whatever he wanted to do. He would take and he would give someone. He would take and he would use perhaps if he needed something. It was not wrong for a Nabi to take a hadiyah. Hadiyah meaning a gift. But he would never take a charity. They even tested him. They tested him. Salman al-Farisi says, radiallahu anhu, I was working in the orchard of a certain man and I wanted to test because I heard from the scriptures that this man will not take charities. But if you give him a gift, he will partake from it. So he says, one day I came with some dates and I told him this is a charity. He took it and put it on the side. He gave it to the others. And then when I came the next time and I told him this is a gift, he ate one from it. And then he said, I knew that this is correct. This is a Nabi. One of several points that he made mention of. So getting back to Anas bin Malik, he was a young boy, young boy. His mother came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Oh messenger, everyone is bringing gifts to you. I have nothing to give you. I have nothing to give you. But I have a young boy, my own son. I want to give him as a gift to you to be a servant to fulfill the chores that you may have within and outside your house. I want him to serve you. The Prophet ﷺ looked at the young boy, radiating face, beautiful smile, and the boy is ready for the service. Imagine how they were trained to love Muhammad ﷺ so much that I'm giving my son and he's going to go. That's it. He's going to serve Muhammad ﷺ and he will just work. No payment, no nothing, meaning you're just going. You're not a slave. You're not anything of that nature. You're just a person who is being given as a gift from your mother to Muhammad to serve. So Muhammad said, okay, this woman was absolutely intelligent, extremely intelligent. I tell you why. Today, when you look at the hadith that is narrated, and when you read Anas bin Malik narrates, you know it is something a lot of people didn't know because he was inside the house. You see, the honor came later on when you say Anas ibn Malik, do you know he was the last from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum to pass away or one of the oldest in age. And at the same time, he knew so much because he lived inside the house. He knew how Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa got up, how he slept, what he said, what he did, how he ate, what he preferred, what he didn't. A lot of these private ahadith, they will come either from the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa or what is known as the khadim. Khadim meaning a servant. So Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, very interestingly, he says, I started serving Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and I served him for 10 whole years. How many years? 10 years. Not one month, two months, five months, 10 years. So we spoke about spouse earlier, right? We spoke about family members, how important it is to utter good words to them. Now listen, this is a servant. He says, خَدِمْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ عَشْرَ سِنِينَ فَمَا قَالَ لِيَ أُفٍ قَطُّ Not once did he make an expression that was hurtful in 10 years. He didn't even say, uh, that's the word used in the hadith, uff. Uff means a sound that you make when you're upset. You know, when someone does something and you say, uh, you know, different people make different sounds. In the Arabic language, they say, uff, uff meaning, you know, it's a sound to say you're cross, you're not upset. You're not supposed to be. In fact, you're supposed to control when you're upset what you say. That's your test. That's your heaven. Those are your deeds. Anas ibn Malik is saying, I served. I was a servant. I served Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 10 whole years. Not once did he say oof to me. I was never hurt by a statement that came from his mouth. Not once. And you know what else he says? وَمَا قَالَ لِشَيْءٍ صَنَعْتُهُ لِمَا صَنَعْتَهُ Not once did he say, when I did something wrong, why did you do this? He would correct it himself. Imagine if your clothes are burnt by someone you're paying to, to iron. What happens? I think not only would the, cloth, the clothing be on fire, but the person would also be fired. And sometimes the words we utter are worse than releasing them from the job. 
I recall there was an uncle who had someone working for him for 15 years. And one day this man made a very big mistake and he happened out of curiosity to turn on the engine of a brand new vehicle that was there thinking this is an automatic car and he damaged it because he didn't know the difference perhaps between the accelerator and the brake. And what happened is when the man who was the employer found out that this what happened, everyone told him to fire his employee. And he says, you know, 15 years he's worked. He has served me dedicatedly. This is the first major mistake he's made. I forgive him. I'm not encouraging people here to damage other vehicles and to claim that you know what we heard that you should be forgiving. The point is the relationship between employer and employee. That is the point. Look at Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. He speaks so highly of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I want you to go into your lives and think of the people whom you work with, you work for or who work for you. Do they have good words to say about you? If they had to bear witness for you, would they say, this man is a really good man. He's one of the best whom I've met. If that is the case, you are treading the path. You're walking on the line. The Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in order. If you know what I'm saying. There's no point in me saying I love the Prophet and I am leading a life heading to hell when he was calling me towards heaven. There's no point in me loudly uttering Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and as soon as I walk out, I'm a devil. That, that's pointless, completely pointless. Like I'm saying, there is something wrong with your sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means when you say may peace and blessings be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it should come out of your love and your readiness to follow him. That's what it should be. It should come from the bottom of your heart. When someone says, hey, how's it, how's it? And they're smiling at you. And you know it's not from the heart. You're very uneasy because you know, hey, this guy here, he damages whole day, whole night. He's harming, he does this. And now look at him trying to pretend like he's so close. Hypocrisy. Let's protect ourselves from it. Anas ibn Malik, so close, young boy, he comes up and he says, Wallahi, later on in his life, he said, Wallahi, I served the messenger for 10 years, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when I did wrong things. He never told me, why did you do this and why didn't you do this? No way. He just did it. He smiled and he carried on. May Allah improve us. May we improve ourselves by the help of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's move further. The same hadith, Anas ibn Malik, and now we're speaking about some of the qualities, the physical features of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, and my brothers and sisters, this is in honor of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa I will end with this point inshallah. It is in honor of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa When I say honor, you know Allah created him in the most beautiful way. Nobody was more good looking than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Nobody had physical perfection. Like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa A poet says, it is as though he was created how he wanted to be created. Subhanallah. Mentioning how beautiful this man was inside out. Completely every aspect of the term beauty. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Anas ibn Malik with tears in his eyes, he says, Wallahi. What did he say at the beginning? He spoke about how 10 years I served this man. And 10 years, he never told me a word that hurt me. He always said good words, no matter what. Brothers and sisters, those we work with or for or colleagues, say good words, follow the sunnah, say the best words. Go home today and tell yourself, my life is changing. The way I speak to those around me shall change. If only that happens today, you have succeeded and so have I. I tell you, he says, Wallahi, ma masastu khazzan wala dibajan wala hariran aliyana min kaffi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What an honor. He says, my brothers, Wallahi, I have never touched, I have never touched anything, any silk or soft material, any kind of silk softer than the hands and the palm of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he's describing for us how soft the hand was. It was so soft, but 
it was not out of laziness or the fact that someone is wealthy and they've never touched anything that the hand is soft he was the most hard working from all but Allah blessed him with soft hands you know when you work very hard and you shake someone's hand you can tell this man works very hard he's got blisters he might probably digging the field and probably whatever else and when you have a soft hand you think mm, this man's quite wealthy it's just a guess why he doesn't touch a plate man everything's done for him for us that's the criteria they saw Muhammad وسلم, do things himself he was the most hard working you know on the day of Khandaq Wallahi they were digging they were digging the companions they were complaining of how hungry they were because there was no food and they had a deadline to meet and they had tied a stone because at that time in order to combat the hunger you would tie something on your belly so that your, the acidity doesn't affect you because your belly is empty when they someone said something to Muhammad وسلم, they noticed he has two stones tied subhanallah so he worked even harder. So Anas ibn Malik says he had such a soft hand. I've never felt anything softer than that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the honor of shaking that hand in the akhirah. And then he says, وَمَا شَمَمْتُ مِسْكًا وَلَا عَمْبَرًا أَطْيَبَ مِنْ عَرَقِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Wallahi, I have never smelt anything like musk or amber. No perfume, no matter how good smelling it was. I've never smelt any perfume that is better in scent and smell than the perspiration or sweat of Muhammad sallallahu Imagine what must have been. That scent, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You and I, when we perspire, people don't want to stand next to us. They don't want to stand next to us. It's actually a stench. It's a bad smell, a foul smell. People feel uneasy. It's hot. You know, we're going to sweat. We're worried. With Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was the other way around, subhanallah. When he perspired, it, the whole room began to smell. How beautiful, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu telling us, confirming to us that he was the chosen one. He was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the most noble, the highest of all creation, subhanallah. So this narration of Anas ibn Malik is only one. There are so many other narrations where he speaks of things that have happened in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he was a servant of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he noticed and he saw so many ahadith but I've only mentioned one in order for us to be able to protect our tongue my brothers and sisters with these few words I say let us take a lesson and let us take home something at least something become conscious what I've said today is not difficult to adopt but it needs dedication it needs a person to make a resolution now to say, you know what? I'm changing the way I speak. I'm going to speak properly, clearly. I will choose the best words. I will lower my voice. You know, the Prophet ﷺ never yelled. Have you ever known that? He never yelled. And in fact, in the Quran, Allah says regarding screaming that in karal aswati la sawtul hamir. The worst of sounds is the sound of a braying donkey, a braying ass. Why? When it brays. Like when someone is yelling, you don't even know what they say. They're screaming, the throat becomes hoarse. You notice that? You don't even know. Why? Why is your throat so hoarse? You've been yelling all day at who? These workers, man. Are you a Muslim? Are you really someone who follows Muhammad sallallahu Go back, go and read what he used to do. And then ask yourself, am I really a follower? Your throat wouldn't have been hoarse for the wrong reasons. May Allah bless us. I hope our homes can become more beautiful homes. I hope our workplace can become beautiful. And I hope we can be living examples of who Muslims are supposed to be. Today, you and I know that people who are perpetrating crimes in the name of Islam have more or less hijacked this beautiful name and tarnished it or tried to tarnish it. And guess what? It makes what I'm saying today even more important for us to be able to fulfill those non-Muslims who know us will bear witness that Muslims are actually good. Muslims are really wonderful people. If you want to learn, just watch a Muslim. Watch how he lives and live like that. That's what they will have to say. But today, sadly, they look at the Muslims and say, watch these guys. 
You want the biggest crooks, you get from amongst them. You want the biggest cheats, you get from amongst them. You want the loudest mouths, you get from amongst them. The most vulgar of all from amongst them. Is that really true? I hope not. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that happen in our midst. May we all be blessed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and our families. And once again, we say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's complete blessings and salutations be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayki.